Hello and welcome to Astronax. Today's topic, jumping through hyperspace. From the ground to beyond the speed of light. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to enter hyperspace? Well, I'm going to tell you. We have been slowly, assuredly filling in the gaps, the misconceptions that surround the field of faster than light travel. This is a short video, so let's not waste any more time. What is hyperspace? Hyperspace is the region of space-time above the speed of light. Traveling above the speed of light is called superluminal, traveling at the speed of light is called luminal, and below the speed of light is called subluminal. In order to provide you with a more comprehensive experience, let's briefly run through a scenario. The day in a life of the chief engineer of a starship. From the ground, beyond the speed of light. It's 6 a.m. on a mild sunny morning in November. Sitting on the landing pad is a 350 tall meter spheroidal starship fitted with 24 fusion antimatter hybrid rocket engines. As the ground crew clears the site out for a 5 mile safety radius, the crew inside are in the process of checking and rechecking all systems. Moments later, the chief engineer signals the captain, All systems are green, sir. Within mere seconds, the AI confirms that all systems are indeed green. A go. The captain, on my mark, initiate engines. As everyone looks around the control room, there's a moment of silence. Then, the captain, engage. With a simple touch of her screen, the engines come alive with a roar that could be heard for miles around. The AI's automatic takeoff and flight program have been activated. The starship shudders with an awesome sense of power as it begins slowly rising into the air. Moments later, the landing gear retracts and the distortion screen is immediately activated, generating a repulsive time dilation and mass shield around the entire starship. As it accelerates upward, there is no sense of acceleration, at least not yet. The AI is entrusted with the task of automatically regulating engine thrust, especially while it's in the atmosphere, and avoiding all obstacles on its way into space. Once the starship has cleared all bodies, the planet, other craft, etc., it then accelerates at full thrust farther out into space, where it begins its four-hour-long acceleration period up to 99.9% the speed of light. Whilst accelerating, the stars, unless dangerously close to the starship, will remain largely fixed with no indication that the starship is moving since the stars are just too far away to notice any relative motion. During the flight, the crew double or triple checks the AI's flight coordinates by entering the coordinates into another AI system, where it then performs the necessary calculations within mere fractions of a second. After having traveled at full thrust for nearly four hours, the AI signals that the starship is now nearing the speed of light. Up to this point, the distortion screen has been left on, shielding against time dilation effects from traveling at great speed. Now, at the perfect moment, and I mean perfect moment, two things must take place with perfect timing. One. A special secondary drive is activated, which thrusts the starship forward with a tremendous burst of acceleration. And two, the distortion screen is switched off to allow the drive to function. Within mere fractions of a second, the starship is boosted into hyperspace, where it immediately upon exceeding the speed of light dematerializes, generating in the process a powerful high-frequency gravitational wave. Once in hyperspace, the stars in front of the starship blue shift, whilst the stars to your left and right remain mostly fixed, at three-quarter rear view the stars red shift, directly behind turns black in pursuance of the starship. Remember that secondary drive? It is the configuration of this drive that generates a warp bubble-like distortion of space-time, like Alcabier's drive, 
which both maintains the structural form of the starship and its crew. Anne shrinks the space and time between the starship and its destination. But here is where the greatest danger exists. Once the crew have been dematerialized, from that moment on they have no ability to control the starship, let alone become aware of their situation. What is the danger? If a hyperspace jump is not properly set up prior to the jump, the starship and its crew will fail to rematerialize at their destination, dooming them to either remain in hyperspace forever or at least become lost in space and time. Therefore, all parameters must be met long before a jump is initiated. The big question is now, how does the starship rematerialize? Hmm, we'll let you think about that one. So there you have it, from the ground to beyond the speed of light. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe, and if you like our videos and want to learn more, support us on Patreon. Thank you. Until next time, keep wandering about space.